Welcome to another episode of Dan Factoids. In this edition, we will be discussing the issue of persistence of nitrogen bubbles after diving. We received a question from an instructor who was asking on behalf of one of his students. What happens to nitrogen bubbles in case of untreated decompression sickness? In other words, if a person has not received recompression. This is an interesting question and I'd like to differentiate it or distinguish it into three parts. Firstly, so-called asymptomatic bubbles, bubbles that don't produce symptoms. Then, symptomatic bubbles in nervous tissue and lastly, symptomatic bubbles in bones and joints. Now, nearly all dives that are deeper than 18 meters or so do have the potential to produce some venous gas emboli which you can actually measure and hear when putting a Doppler probe over the heart. The fact that there are bubbles though is not necessarily associated with diving symptoms. And we have found that these types of bubbles tend to peak over the first one to two hours after diving, but are very rarely detected after six hours of diving. So asymptomatic bubbles and venous gas emboli usually last for let's say up to six hours. That gives us enough time to formulate the hypothesis that the process of breathing allows bubbles and gas to circulate to such an extent through the lungs that they are effectively eliminated. The second question is what about bubbles in the nervous system? Well, these pose somewhat different implications. Not only do the bubbles themselves cause injuries to the delicate tissues of the nervous system, but they may cause bleeding or they can be surrounded by a shell or substances formed by the body that would make them persist far longer than bubbles in the blood. We do not know exactly how long it would take for them to resolve, but most experts agree that recompressing divers with neurological decompression sickness, if this is the actual diagnosis, that it is worthwhile to try and treat them between 14 and 30 days after the onset of symptoms. Now in truth, it is unlikely that the bubbles have actually persisted that long, but hyperbaric oxygenation may still be helpful in resolving some of the edema and secondary damage that was the consequence of the bubbles in nervous tissue. Lastly, what about bubbles in bone and joints? Will they pose a potentially different challenge? First of all, there is no definitive scientific proof that bubbles in joints or bones cause so-called long-term bone necrosis. In truth, this is something that has been put forward and has been part of the justification for recompressing joint-related pain, which is presumed to be decompression sickness, but the association is actually a very loose one. We find individuals who have never had joint pain that develop bone necrosis, mostly in commercial diving, and we occasionally find individuals who develop the bone necrosis as a result of something entirely different to diving, for instance, high dose cortisone and so on. So, most experts believe that bubbles do persist in joints and bone for probably up to a week. After that, it is really the inflammation that was caused by the bubbles 
that is the most likely cause for residual pain. Recompression may still be helpful in resolving the inflammation, but it is unlikely to make a dramatic difference in the overall outcome, which is typically very good. For more information, look at our workshop on treating decompression sickness in remote locations. Thank you for watching this edition of Dan Factoids. We hope we've answered some of your questions and of course, keep them coming. We love answering them.